George's Marvelous Medicine by Roald Dahl, adapted by Edward Phillips. I'm off now, George. I'm going shopping in the village, so be a good boy. Don't get up to any mischief. All right, Mother. And don't forget to give Grandma her medicine at 11 o'clock. I won't forget. Aye. Bye. See you later. Bye, Mother. You heard that, George? Don't forget to give me my medicine at 11 o'clock. Sharp. I won't, Grandma. And just try to behave yourself whilst your mother's out. Yes, Grandma. George was bored to tears. He didn't have a brother or sister. His father was a farmer, and the farm they lived on was miles away from anywhere, so there were never any children to play with. He was tired of staring at pigs and hens and cows and sheep. He was especially tired of having to live in the same house as that grisly old grunion of a grandma. Looking after her all by himself was hardly the most exciting way to spend a Saturday morning. Most grandmothers are lovely, kind, helpful old ladies, but not this one. She spent all day and every day sitting in her chair by the window, and she was always complaining, grousing, grouching, grumbling and griping about something or other. She didn't seem to care about other people, only about herself. She was a miserable old grouch. And what was even worse, she looked very much like a witch. She was small and wrinkled, with a curved nose that pointed down and a sharp chin that pointed up. Her teeth were all brown and broken, and she had a small, puckered-up mouth, like a dog's bottom. I wonder if she really is a witch, George thought to himself. I wonder if she... George! Don't stand there daydreaming! Pour me a nice cup of tea! That'll keep you out of mischief for a few minutes. All right, Grandma. How much sugar would you like? One spoonful. And no milk. Here you are, Grandma. <laughs> it's not sweet enough. But you said one spoonful. Don't argue. Put some more sugar in and be quick about it. Yes, Grandma. Is that sweet enough for you, Grandma? How should I know you haven't given me a teaspoon? I've already stirred it for you. I'm quite capable of stirring my own tea, thank you very much. Now get me a teaspoon. Here you are, Grandma. You know what's the matter with you, George? You're growing too fast. Boys who grow too fast become stupid and lazy. But I can't help it if I'm growing fast, Grandma. Of course you can. Growing is a nasty, childish habit. But we have to grow, Grandma. If we didn't grow, we'd never be grown up. Rubbish, boy, rubbish. Look at me. Am I growing? Of course I'm not. But you did once. Only a very little. I gave up growing when I was extremely small, along with all the other nasty childish habits like laziness and disobedience and greed and sloppiness and untidiness and stupidity. But, Grandma... You haven't given up any of these things, have you? I'm still only a little boy, Grandma. You're eight years old. That's old enough to know better. If you don't stop growing soon, it's going to be too late. Too late for what? Don't contradict. It's ridiculous. You're nearly as tall as me already. Dad says it's fine for a man to be tall. Don't listen to what he says. <laughs> listen to me. You might learn something. But how do I stop myself growing? Eat less chocolate. Does chocolate make you grow? It makes you grow the wrong way. Up instead of down. Never grow up. Always down. 
Are you quite sure of your facts, Grandma? Of course I'm sure. So stop eating chocolate. Eat cabbage instead. But I don't like cabbage. It's not a question of what you like or what you don't like. It's what's good for you that counts. From now on, you must eat cabbage three times a day. Mountains of it. And if it's got caterpillars in it, so much the better. Caterpillars? Ugh! Mother always washes them down the sink. Your mother's as stupid as you are. Cabbage doesn't taste of anything without a few boiled caterpillars in it. And slugs are even better. But, Grandma, I couldn't possibly eat slugs. They're delicious, you stupid boy. Whenever I see a live slug on a piece of lettuce, I gobble it up quick before it crawls away. Worms and slugs and beetly bugs. You don't know what's good for you. You're joking, Grandma. I never joke. And then, of course, there's beetles. Beetles are best of all. You can crunch them up. Grandma, that's horrible. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you get a beetle inside the stem of a stick of celery. Now, that is what I like best. You find all sorts of nice things in sticks of raw celery. For instance, you might get an earwig. I, I'd rather not hear any more, Grandma, if you don't mind. A big, fat earwig is very tasty. But you've got to be quick when you put one of those in your mouth. It has a pair of sharp nippers on its back. And if it grabs your tongue with those, it never lets go. So you've got to bite the earwig first. Chop, chop, before it bites you. George, where you going? Don't try to sneak off while I'm talking to you. Come over here near me and I'll tell you some secrets. I know a great many secrets. I'd love to hear them, Grandma, but I've got quite a lot to do. Nonsense. Come closer, my dear. That's right. You mustn't be scared of your dear old Grandma. There's nothing to be frightened of. You see, some of us have magic powers that can twist the creatures of this earth into wonderful shapes. Some of us have fire on our tongues and wizardry in the tips of our fingers. Some of us know secrets that would make your hair stand straight up on end and your eyes pop out of their sockets. We know how to make your nails drop off and teeth grow out of your fingers instead. We know how to have you wake up in the morning with a long tail coming out from behind you. Yes, well, I've got to be running along now, Grandma. We know secrets, my dear, about places where dark things live and squirm and slither all over each other. We know. George, where are you going? George, come back here. Never mind, George. It doesn't matter how far you run, you won't ever get away from your own grandma. <laughs> when he reached the safety of the kitchen, George sat down at the table. He was shaking a little. He really hated that horrid, witchy old woman. All of a sudden, he had a tremendous urge to do something about her. Something whopping. Something absolutely terrific. A real shocker. A sort of explosion. He wanted to blow away the witchy smell that hung about her in the next room. He would have liked to put a firework banger under a chair. But he didn't have one. He would have liked to put a long green snake down the back of her dress. But he didn't have a long green snake. He would have liked to have put six big black rats in the room with her and locked the door. But he didn't have six big black rats. 
as he sat there pondering this interesting problem, his eye fell upon the bottle of Grandma's brown medicine standing on the sideboard. Rotten stuff, it seemed to be. Four times a day, a large spoonful of it was shoveled into her mouth, and it didn't do her the slightest bit of good. She was always just as horrid after she'd had it as she'd been before. The whole point of medicine surely was to make a person better. If it didn't do that, then it was quite useless. And then, suddenly, George had an idea. I know what I'll do. I'll make Grandma a new medicine. One that's so strong and fierce and fantastic, it will either cure her completely or blow off the top of her head. Ten o'clock. I've got a whole hour before Grandma's next dose is due. Plenty of time to put something together. Now, I've got to think carefully. This has got to be a really magic and marvellous medicine. A medicine no doctor in the world has ever made before. What shall I need first? Something to put it in. A saucepan. A really big saucepan. Aha! Here's the very thing. George? What are you doing in there? Nothing, Grandma. Nothing at all. You needn't think I can't hear you just because you closed the door. You're rattling the saucepans. Um, I'm just tidying up the kitchen, Grandma. A likely story. Well, whatever you're doing, stop it at once or it'll be the worst for you. George was now even more determined to make his marvellous new medicine. And he had absolutely no doubts whatsoever about how he was going to make it. He wasn't going to fool about wondering whether to put in a little bit of this or a little bit of that. He was going to put in everything that he could find. The rule would be this. Whatever he saw, if it was runny or powdery or gooey, in it went. He decided to work his way around the various rooms one at a time and see what they had to offer. He would go first to the bathroom. There are always lots of funny things in a bathroom. So upstairs he went, carrying the enormous two-handled saucepan before him. In the bathroom, he gazed longingly at the famous and dreaded medicine cupboard. It was the only thing in the entire house he was forbidden to touch. There were things in there, they had told him, that could actually kill a person. And although he was out to give Grandma a pretty fiery mouthful, he didn't really want a dead body on his hands. He put the saucepan on the floor and went to work. Now, let's see. What have we here? Golden glass hair shampoo. That ought to wash Grandma's tummy nice and clean. We'll start with that. Now, what's next? Toothpaste. Yes, I'll put in a bit of that too. Maybe it will brighten up those horrid brown teeth of hers. Aha! Super foam shaving salt. Great! Vitamin enriched face cream. Well, why not? Though I doubt if anything could enrich Grandma's face. Mm, now, what's this little bottle? Nail varnish. Well, if the toothpaste doesn't clean her teeth, this will paint them as red as roses. Now, what does this say? Hair remover. Smear it on your legs and allow to remain for five minutes. All right, in you go. Anything else? Dishworth's famous dandruff cure. Oh, I can't leave that out. And the next, Brillident for cleaning false teeth. Just the thing. Nevermore Ponging Deodorant Spray. Guaranteed to keep away unpleasant body smells for a whole day. Grandma could use plenty of that. Now we're really getting somewhere. Hello, what's this? 
liquid paraffin. Well, I might as well risk it. Well, that seems to be all in the bathroom. I think I'll try the bedroom next. There should be something in there I can use. Now, let's see. Mother's dressing table should be the best place to start. What have we got? Hmm. Helga's hair set. Hold 12 inches away from the hair and spray lightly. Right. Flowers of turnips. Some sort of perfume, I suppose. Phew! Smells of old cheese. Oh well, can't do any harm. After he had finished in the bedroom, George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room, where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first thing he took down was a large box of Super White for automatic washing machines. Dirt will disappear like magic. He didn't know whether Grandma was automatic or not, but she was certainly dirty, so in it went. Well, I think she'd better have all of this. She needs it. Hmm, the saucepan's getting pretty full. Hello, what's this? Orange-coloured waxy stuff. Waxwell floor polish. It removes filth and foul message from your floor and leaves everything shiny bright. Could have been made for her. Now, what's this? Flea powder for dogs. Good. Canary seed. Perhaps it'll make the old bird sing. Oh boy, this is beginning to look really fantastic. Uh-oh, I've just thought of something. Grandma's medicine is brown, so my medicine must be brown too, or she'll notice the difference. I know, brown shoe polish. That should do it. Now then, what else have we got here? On his way back to the kitchen, George saw a bottle of gin standing on the sideboard. Grandma was very fond of gin. She was allowed to have a small nip of it every evening. George thought he would give her a treat and pour in the whole bottle. So he did. Back in the kitchen, he put the huge saucepan on the table and went over to the cupboard that served as a larder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the saucepan. A tin of curry powder, a tin of mustard powder, a bottle of extra hot chili sauce, a tin of black peppercorns, a bottle of horseradish sauce. There, that should do it. This is going to be the most marvellous medicine the world has ever seen. George? Who are you talking to in there? What are you up to? Nothing, Grandma. Absolutely nothing. Is it time for my medicine yet? No, Grandma. Not for about half an hour. Well, just so you don't forget it. I won't, Grandma. I promise I won't. At this point, George suddenly had an extra good idea. Although the medicine cupboard was forbidden ground, what about the medicines his father kept on the shelf in the shed next to the hen house? The animal medicines. Nobody had ever told him he mustn't touch them. Let's face it, George said to himself, hairspray and shaving cream and shoe polish are all very well, and they will no doubt cause some splendid explosions inside the old geezer, but what the magic mixture now needs is a touch of the real stuff. Real pills and real tonics to give it punch and muscle. He picked up the heavy three-quarters full saucepan and carried it out of the back door and across to the shed. Phew! This saucepan weighs a ton! <sighs> now, let's see. Hmm. Four big bottles, one full of pills, two full of runny stuff, and one full of powder. All right, I'll use them all. Now then, 
for chickens with foul pest, hen gripe, sore beaks, gammy legs, cockerelitis, egg trouble, broodness or loss of feathers, mix one spoonful only with each bucket of feed. Well, the old bird won't be losing any feathers after she's had a dose of this. Now, what are these purple pills? For horses with horse throats, the horse-throated horse should suck one pill twice a day. Grandma may not have a horse throat, but she's certainly got a short tongue. Maybe they'll cure that instead. Sheep dip. For sheep with sheep rot and for getting rid of ticks and fleas. Boy golly, how I'd love to walk in there and slash it all over Grandma and watch the ticks and fleas go jumping off her. But I mustn't. I can't. So she'll have to drink it instead. Now, what's this last bottle? For pigs with pork prickles, tender trotters, bristle blight and swine sickness. Just the stuff. She'll need a very big dose of this. There was an old stick lying on the bench that had been used for stirring paint. George picked it up and started to stir his marvellous concoction. The mixture was as thick as cream. And as he stirred and stirred, many wonderful colours rose up from the depths and blended together. Pinks, blues, greens, yellows and browns. George went on stirring until it was all well mixed. But even so, there were still dozens of pills lying on the bottom that hadn't melted. I shall have to boil it up. One good quick boil on the stove is all it needs. And with that, he staggered back towards the house with the enormous heavy saucepan. In the kitchen, he put the saucepan on the stove and turned up the gas flame underneath it as high as it would go. George, it's time for my medicine. Not yet, Grandma. There's still 20 minutes before 11 o'clock. What mischief are you up to now? I can hear noises. George thought it best not to answer this one. The mixture in the saucepan got hotter and hotter. Soon the marvellous medicine began to froth and foam. A rich blue smoke, the colour of peacocks, rose from the surface of the liquid and a fiery, fearsome smell filled the kitchen. It made George choke and splutter. <coughs> it was a smell unlike any he had smelled before. At one point, he could have sworn he saw bright sparks flashing in the swirling foam. George turned off the heat under the saucepan. When all the steam and froth had gone away, he peered into the giant pan to see what colour the great medicine was now. Oh dear, it's turned blue. It needs more brown in it. It simply must be brown or Grandma will get suspicious. There isn't any more shoe polish left, so I'll have to... Hello, what's this tin under the table? Dark brown glass paint, one quart. The very thing. And it's nearly full. In you go. Wow, the saucepan's full to the brim. I'll have to stir very gently or I'll spill it. Aha, let's turn brown. A lovely, rich, creamy brown. Where's that medicine of mine, boy? You're forgetting me again. You're doing it on purpose, I shall tell your mother. I'm not forgetting you, Grandma. I'm thinking of you all the time. But there are still ten minutes to go. You're a nasty little maggot. You're a lazy, undisobedient little worm. And you're growing too fast. George fetched the bottle of Grandma's real medicine from the sideboard. He took out the cork and tipped it all down the sink. 
He then filled the bottle with his own magic mixture by dipping a small jug into the saucepan and using it as a pourer. He replaced the cork carefully. Everything was now ready. This was it. The great moment had arrived. The silver tablespoon in which the medicine was always given lay ready on the kitchen sideboard. George picked it up. Holding the spoon in one hand and the bottle in the other, he crossed to the living room door. He tucked the spoon under his arm and opened the door. Medicine time, Grandma! I should think so too. You're late. I don't think I am, Grandma. It's just on 11 o'clock. Don't interrupt me in the middle of a sentence. But you'd finished your sentence, Grandma. Don't change the subject. You're always interrupting and arguing. You really are a tiresome little boy. Now stop talking so much and give me my medicine. Shake the bottle first, then pour it into the spoon and make sure it's a whole spoonful. Are you going to gulp it down all in one go, or will you sip it? None of your business. Just fill the spoon. Open your mouth wide, Grandma, and I'll pop it all in. Here we go. Swallow it all down. Now then, how do you feel, Grandma? What do you mean, how do I feel? I feel just the same as I always... Is something wrong, Grandma? Are you all right? <laughs> Call the fire brigade! My stomach's on fire! It's just the medicine, Grandma. It's strong stuff, but it'll do you good. Fire in the basement! Get a bucket! Man the hoses! Do something quick! <laughs> Grandma, you'll be all right in a minute. Oh dear. Uh, Grandma, I don't like to mention this, but there's smoke coming out of your mouth. I'm afraid you really are on fire. Of course I'm on fire. I'll be burned to a crisp. I'll be fried to a frizzle. I'll be boiled like a beetroot. Just a minute, I'll go get you a glass of water. Here we are. Now open your mouth wide. There, that should have put the fire out. You'll be all right now. What do you mean all right? There's Jackie jumpers in me tummy. There's squigglers in me belly. There's banners in me bottom. You'll find it's doing you a lot of good, Grandma. Doing me good? It's killing me! Oh no! What's happening now? Oh, 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 I'm beginning to bulge. I'm so well enough. I'm going to explode! Yes, you are! And your face is turning purple. What's happening to me? Oh. It's all right, Grandma. You've had a puncture. You're getting thinner again. There, you're back to your old size. How do you feel now? Yeah! Grandma, you haven't stood up like that for years. That's terrific. Look at you. You're standing up all on your own and you're not even using your stick. Uh-oh, Grandma, you're beginning to grow again. 
I think you'd better try and slow down. You'll be hitting the ceiling in a minute. Yippee! Here I go! The top of your head's touching the ceiling. I really think you'd better stop now, Grandma. Dad's just had the whole room repainted. Look out, you're going through! George dashed upstairs to his bedroom, which was just above the living room. He arrived just in time to see Grandma's head coming up through the floor like a mushroom. Whoopee! Hallelujah! Here I come! Steady on, Grandma! With a hand on me now, and up we go! This is my bedroom, Grandma! Look at the mess you're making. That medicine's terrific, George. Give me some more quickly. You've still got the bottle, haven't you? Well, yes, but... Well, hurry up then, you slow coach. I'm beginning to slow down. I really don't think you should exceed the stated dose, Grandma. Do as I say, you disobedient little brute. Well, if you say so, Grandma, here you are then. Ooh, wee! I'm on my way now, boy. There's no stopping me. Just watch me go. That's the attic above you, Grandma. I'd keep out of there if I were you. It's full of bugs and bogles. You're going to go right through the roof. George ran downstairs and rushed out of the back door and into the yard. It would be simply awful, he thought, if Grandma bashed up the roof as well. His father would be furious. And he, George, would get the blame. He had made the medicine. He had given Grandma too much. When the music stops, turn your cassette over. looking up at the roof. There was no sign of Grandma. There was only a song thrush sitting on one of the chimney pots, singing a song. The old wurzel stuck in the attic, George thought. Thank goodness for that. And then, suddenly, a tile came clattering down from the roof and fell into the yard. The song thrush took off fast and flew away. Then another tile came down. Then half a dozen more. And then, very slowly, like some weird monster rising up from the deep, Grandma's head came through the roof. Then her scrawny neck. And the tops of her shoulders. How am I doing, boy? How's that for a fashion? Don't you think you'd better stop now, Grandma? I have stopped. I feel terrific. Didn't I tell you I had magic powers? Didn't I warn you I had wizardry in the tips of my fingers? But you wouldn't listen to me, would you? You wouldn't listen to your old grandma. But you didn't do it, grandma. I did it. I made you a new medicine. You made a new medicine? What are you talking about? I tell you, I made a new medicine. I put in everything I could find and... You're lying as usual. You are always lying. I'm not lying, Grandma. I swear I'm not. Well, even if you're telling the truth, I still don't believe you. Now stop 
chattering and fetch me a cup of tea. Grandma, it's true about the medicine. Look, I'll prove it to you. See this little brown hen down here? I'll give it some of the medicine. If you don't believe me, just watch this. Hey, chicken, come over here and have some of this nice medicine. Now, just watch this, Grandma. There you are, what did I tell you? It shot straight up into the air like a rocket. It went up as high as the house and came straight back down again. You've done it in, you stupid boy. That hen has had it. Your father will be after you now. He'll give you socks and serve you right. Oh, no! What's the matter with it? There's black smoke pouring out of his beak. It's on fire! It'll be roasted and ready for eating at any moment. Get a bucket of water, quick! All right, Grandma! <laughs> that hen has laid its last egg. Hens don't do any laying, not after they've been on fire. It seems all right, Grandma. Look, it's flapping its wings. <laughs> It's crouching down. I think it's getting ready to jump. Yes, there it goes. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's turned a complete somersault. I've never seen a hen do that before. You've turned it into a circus hen. It's a flipping acrobat. Grandma, look, it's growing. Just like you did. It's four or five times its normal size already. Can you see it? I can see it, boy. I'm watching. It's had the magic medicine, Grandma, and it's growing just like you did. Oh, no, it isn't. It's not growing like you did at all. When you grew taller, you got thinner and thinner, but the hens stay nice and plump. It's much taller than me now. It's as big as a horse. Hello, I think it's stopping. Yes, it is. It's stopped growing. Doesn't it look marvellous? It's not as tall as me. Compared with me, that hen is titchy small. I am the tallest of them all. At that moment, George's mother came back from shopping in the village. She drove her car into the yard and got out. She was carrying a bottle of milk in one hand and a bag of groceries in the other. The first thing she saw was the gigantic brown hen towering over little George. After dropping the milk bottle, she looked up and saw Grandma's head sticking up through the broken tiles of the roof of the house. George's giant hen, that is. What on earth? It's George's magic medicine. We've both of us had it. The hen and me. But how in the world did you get up on the roof? I'm not up on the roof. My feet are still standing on the floor in the living room. This was too much for George's mother to understand. She just stood there goggling and gaping. She looked as though she was going to faint. A few minutes later, George's father arrived. His name was Mr. Killy Cranky. He was a small man with bandy legs and a huge head. He was a kind father to George, but he was not an easy person to live with because even the smallest things got him all worked up and excited. The hen standing in the yard was certainly not a small thing. And when Mr. Cranky saw it, he started jumping about as though something was burning his feet. Great heavens to Betsy! It's a giant hen! What's happened? Where did it come from? Never mind about the hen! 
again. Look at me! Look at me! Oh, shut up, Grandma! It didn't seem to surprise Mr. Cranky that the old girl was sticking up through the roof. It was the hen that excited him. He had never seen anything like it. <laughs> this is fantastic! It's colossal! It's gigantic! It's tremendous! It's a miracle! <laughs> oh, uh, George, what happened? Well, you see, Dad, I made Grandma some special medicine. I mixed up everything I could find and... No, 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 hang on a minute, George. That hen's laying an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Great heavens it is. It's laid an egg. And look at the size of it. It's as big as a football. It would make scrambled eggs for 20 people. Yes, Dad. We told you. It's my new magic medicine. It seems to make people and animals grow and grow and grow. But this is fantastic. George, how much of this medicine have you got? Lots and lots. There's a big saucepan full in the kitchen. And this bottle here is nearly full. Well, come with me yeah, and bring the medicine. Oh, for years and years I've been trying to breed bigger and bigger animals. Bigger bulls for beef, bigger pigs for pork, bigger sheep for mutton. And this is the answer. <laughs> oh, now, no, come on, quickly. We will try the pigsty first. Now then, George. You see that pig at the end, the little one? Give it a spoonful of your medicine. Well, all right, Dad. <laughs> look at it grow! Oh, look at the size of it! It's as big as a bus already! After the pigsty, they went next to the herd of fine black bullocks that Mr. Cranky was trying to fatten for the market. George gave each of them some medicine, and this is what happened. Then they visited the sheep. George gave some of the medicine to his grey pony, Jack Frost. And finally, just for fun, he gave some to Alma, the nanny goat. Grandma, from high up on the rooftop, could see everything that was going on. And she didn't like what she saw. George and his father were running around and getting excited about the enormous animals. Grandma was all alone on the rooftop, and she wanted to be the centre of attention. Yet nobody was taking the slightest notice of her. Don't listen to the old goat. She's stuck where she is and a good thing too. But we can't leave her up there, Dad. What if it rains? George, you horrible little boy. You disgusting little worm. Fetch me a cup of tea at once and a slice of currant cake. We'll have to get her out, Dad. She won't give us any peace if we don't. She's a pain in the neck. I know she is. But we can't leave her sticking up through the roof for the rest of her life. So, in the end, Mr Cranky telephoned the crane company and asked them to send their biggest crane out to the house at once. The crane arrived one hour later. The crane men climbed up onto the roof and put ropes under Grandma's arms. Then she was lifted right up through the roof. In a way, the medicine had done Grandma good. It had not made her any less grumpy or bad-tempered, but it seemed to have cured all her aches and pains. She was suddenly as frisky as a ferret. As soon as the crane had lowered her to the ground, she ran over to George's huge pony, Jack Frost, and jumped onto his back. And then this ancient old hag, who was now as tall as a house, galloped about the farm on the gigantic pony, jumping over trees and sheds. Out of my way! Clear the decks! Stand back, all you miserable midgets, or I'll trample you to death! 
But because Grandma was now much too tall to get back into the house, she had to sleep that night in the hay barn with the mice and the rats. The next day, at breakfast, George's father was in a state of greater excitement than ever. I, I, I'd been awake all night thinking about it. About what, Dad? About your marvellous medicine, of course. We can't stop now, my boy. We must start making more of it at once, more and more and more. But why do we need more, Dad? We've done all our own animals and we've made Grandma feel as frisky as a ferret. Even though she does have to sleep in the barn... My dear boy, we need barrels and barrels of it. Tons and tons. Then we'll sell it to every farmer in the world so that all of them can have giant animals. We'll build a marvellous medicine factory and sell the stuff in bottles at five pounds a time. <laughs> we'll become rich and famous. But wait, Dad. Now we haven't got time to wait. Don't you understand what this tremendous invention of yours is going to do to the world? Nobody will ever go hungry again. They won't? Of course they won't. Because one giant cow will give... 50 buckets of milk a day. One giant chicken will make a hundred fried chicken dinners. And one giant pig will give you a thousand pork chops. <laughs> it's tremendous, my dear boy. It's fantastic. It'll change the world. But wait a minute, Dad. Don't keep saying wait a minute. There isn't a minute to wait. We must get cracking at once. Do calm down, my dear, and stop putting marmalade on your cornflakes. Oh, the heck with my cornflakes. Now, come on, George, let's get going. And the first thing we'll do is make another saucepan full of the medicine as a tester. But, Dad, the trouble is... There won't be any trouble, my boy. How can there possibly be any trouble? All you've got to do is put the same stuff into the saucepan as you did yesterday. And while you're doing it, I'll write down each and every item, and that's how we'll find the magic recipe. But, Dad, please listen to me. Why don't you listen to him? The boy's trying to tell you something. Then, when the new mixture is ready, we'll test it out on an old hen. Dad! Just to make absolutely sure we've got it right. And after that, we'll build a giant factory. But, Dad, the thing is... Oh, come on, then. What is it you're trying to say? We can't possibly remember all the dozens of things we put into the saucepan to make the medicine. Of course you can remember, my boy. No, I'll help you. I'll jog your memory. Now, you'll get it in the end. You see if you don't. Now, then, what was the very first thing you put in? Well, I went up to the bathroom first. I used a lot of things in the bathroom and on Mother's dressing table. Right. Come on, then. Up we go to the bathroom. Dad, I really can't remember every single thing that... It's perfectly simple, George. Now, look at all these empty tubes and bottles and aerosols. They tell us exactly what you used. If anything is empty, it means you used it. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, shampoo, toothpaste, shaving soap, face cream, nail varnish, hair remover, dandruff cure, brilliant, deodorant, and liquid paraffin. Liquid paraffin? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I've got all these down on my list. C come on, let's try the bedroom. Here we are. I told you this was going to be easy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Helga's hair set. Uh -huh. Flowers of turnips. Oh, that seems to be all here. Oh, right, I got those. Now where did you go next? To the laundry room. But are you sure you haven't missed anything out up here, Dad? No, no, I got everything down on my list. Come on, laundry room, next stop. Now, can you remember what you used in here, George? Well, there was super white for automatic washing machines, floor polish... <laughs> Poor old Grandma! Canary seed... Oh, my goodness me! <laughs> what a mass of stuff you used! No wonder he did magic things. Yeah. Is that the lot? No, it's not. 
I put in a bottle of gin, and then I went out to the shed where all the animal medicines are, and... Ah, 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 ah. Don't tell me. Show me. Come on, we haven't a moment to lose. When Mr. Cranky had made a list of all the things George could remember, he leapt into his car and drove down to the village and bought new bottles and tubes and cans of everything on his list. He then went to the vet and got a fresh supply of all the animal medicines George had used. Then he drove back at top speed and burst into the kitchen, clutching all his packages. Here we are. Now then, George, show me how you did it. Show me exactly how you mixed them all together. Uh, which one did you put in first? This one. Golden Gloss Hair Shampoo. Right. In it goes. Now the toothpaste and the shaving soap and the face cream and the nail varnish. And then this and this. And a lot of that. No, oh, keep at it, my boy. Keep at it. Keep putting them in. <laughs> don't miss any of them out. Now, don't pause. Don't hesitate. Oh, it's a pleasure to watch you work. <laughs> Is that the lot? I think so, Dad. Good. Now, what did you do next? Did you stir it? Yes, and I boiled it. Good boy. Here we go, then. <laughs> it's looking good. <laughs> oh, this is going to be terrific. No, Dad, it's not quite right. Wait a minute, I know what I've forgotten. It's the wrong colour. It should be brown. Whack! Oh, George, if we've forgotten even one tiny thing, it won't work. At least not in the same way. I put in some brown shoe polish and a quart of brown gloss paint to make it the right colour. Shoe polish, brown paint. Right, stay there. I'll be right back. Here we are, George. One tin of brown shoe polish and one quart of brown gloss paint. In they go. Better. That's more like the right colour. Oh, look at it boil and bubble. Uh, is it ready yet, do you think? Yes, at least I hope it is. Right. Let's test it. Let's give some to a chicken. My heavens alive. Why don't you calm down a bit? <laughs> calm down? <laughs> you expect me to calm down when here we are mixing up the greatest medicine ever discovered in the history of the world? Now, come on, George. Dip a cupful out of the saucepan and get a spoon and we'll give some to a chicken just to make absolutely certain we got it right. Now then, try that one there. Come on, chicken. Good chicken. Here, chick, chick, chick. Have a sip of this. By golly, look at that chicken. There's sparks flying out of its beak. It's as though someone was sharpening a knife on a grindstone in its tummy. Its legs are growing longer, but its body is staying the same size. Something's gone wrong, Dad. Oh, look at those legs. They must be about 15 feet long. Wait a minute. I think it's stopped growing. It looks like a chicken on stilts. Oh, my sainted aunt, we've got it wrong. This chicken's no good to anybody at all. It's all legs. No one wants 15 foot long chicken's legs. I must have left something out. Yeah, I know you left something out. Now think, boy, think. What was it? I'm sorry, Dad, I just can't remember. Wait a minute, I do remember. Well, what was it? Flea powder for dogs. You mean you put flea powder for dogs in the first batch? Yes, a whole carton of it. Well, then that's the answer. Now, now stay right where you are. No. Uh, get back to the kitchen and stand by that saucepan. Here it is. One carton of flea powder for dogs. In it goes. 
Ah, now, stir it up, George. Give it a good old stir around. Oh, oh, we've got it this time. I'll bet we've got it this time. Right, that's enough. That should do it. Now, uh, let's try it on another chicken. Uh, come on, Mother. Come and watch this. Come and watch us turning an ordinary chicken into one that lays eggs as big as footballs. Well, I hope you do better than you did last time. Come on, chicken. Good chicken. Chick, 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 chick. Have some of this lovely medicine. There he goes. Oh, this is a George we've cracked it now. Watch him grow. Well, he's growing all right. But only his neck. The rest of him staying the same. Huh. Last time it was the legs, now it's the neck. Who wants a chicken with a long neck? You can't eat a chicken's neck, especially one that's six feet long. All right, George. What else have you forgotten? I don't know, Dad. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, come on, boy. Think, think. There's probably just one vital thing missing. And you've got to remember it. The kitchen. We never put in things from the kitchen. What things from the kitchen? You never even mentioned the kitchen. I'm sorry, Dad. It slipped my mind completely. I put in a tin of curry powder, a tin of mustard, a bottle of extra hot chilli sauce, a tin of black peppercorns and a bottle of horseradish sauce. I'll be right back. Now we've got it, boy. This is the big one. <laughs> uh, dump everything in, quickly. Now, boil it up again and give it a good old stir. You'll never get it right. Don't forget, you don't just have to add the same things, but you've got to add exactly the same amounts of those things. And how can you possibly do that? You keep out of this. We're doing fine. Now, we've got it this time. You see if we haven't. Come on, George. To the yard. You're going to have some mighty queer chickens around here if you go on like this. Dish it out, George. Give a spoonful to that brown one over there. Come on, you stupid chicken. Grow, grow! Why is it whistling like that? Keep quiet, woman. It'll start growing any minute now. Dad, I don't like to mention this. But that chicken's getting smaller. It's shrinking. What? It's going down fast. Look at it. Why, it's no bigger than a newly hatched chick. Tarnation! George, there's still something you've left out. I can't think what it could be. Oh, why don't you just give it up? You'll never get it right. It was at this point that Grandma came striding into the yard. From her enormous height, she glared down at the three people below her. What's going on around here? Why hasn't anyone brought me my morning cup of tea? It's bad enough having to sleep in the barn with the rats and the mice, but I'll be blowed if I'm going to starve as well. No tea? No eggs and bacon? No butter toast? I'm, I'm sorry, Grandma. We've been terribly busy. I'll get you something right away. Let George get it, the lazy little brute. What's that you're holding, George? A teacup and a spoon? Ah, so that's your little game, is it? You look after yourself all right, don't you? You make quite sure you've got a nice cup of morning tea, but you didn't think to bring one to your poor old grandma. I always knew you was a selfish little pig. No, grandma, this isn't tea. Don't lie to me, boy. Pass it up here this minute. No, Grandma, no. That's not for you. Now you're against me, too. My own daughter trying to stop me from having a nice cup of morning tea. No, you see, Grandma... Now, calm down, everybody. <laughs> of course the tea's for you, Grandma. You take it and drink it while it's nice and hot. Don't think I won't. Hand it over, George. No, Grandma, you mustn't. You're not to have it. I said give it to me, boy. Grandma, you don't understand. That's George's marvellous... Everything is George's round here. George is this. George is that. I'm fed up with it. Now give me that cup. 
Here you are, Grandma. Drink it up. It's not tea. No, 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 you it's, mustn't. it's George's. Oh. Well, that does it. You have just drunk 50 doses of George's marvelous medicine number four. And look what one tiny spoonful did to that little old brown hen over there. What? You mean this is. No! This is going to be interesting. Have you done it? You've cooked the old girl's goose. Me? I didn't do anything. Oh, yes, you did. You told her to drink it. Serves her right. She'll feel better after she's let off a bit of steam. I think she's going to blow up. Her boiler's going to burst. Stand clear, everybody. Call the police. Call the fire brigade. Man the old pipe. Too late. Grandma! Run to the drinking trough and, and put your head under the water! There she goes! <laughs> She's getting smaller. Now watch what happens when someone's had 50 spoonfuls of George's marvellous medicine instead of one. She's going down. She's about six inches high now. Uh -huh. How do you feel, Grandma? How do I feel? How do you think I feel? How would you feel if you'd been a glorious giant a minute ago? And suddenly you're a miserable midget. She's still shrinking. She's still getting smaller. We've got to stop her. We can't. She's had 50 doses of the medicine. You saw what one dose did for the chicken. But we must stop her. I can hardly... Well, I can hardly see her as it is. Well, catch hold of each end and pull. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's no good. There isn't enough of her to, to catch hold of. I can't see her at all now. Good. She's completely disappeared. Oh, this is terrible. What are we going to do? Well, that's what happens to you if you're grumpy and bad-tempered. George, that medicine of yours is really great stuff. Grandma, where are you? Where have you got to? Can you hear me? Oh, well. I suppose it's all for the best, really. She was a bit of a nuisance around the home. You can say that again. And that was the last anybody ever saw of Grandma. George never did remember what it was he'd forgotten to tell his father he had put in the medicine. Perhaps he hadn't forgotten anything. Perhaps it was just that the amounts were wrong somehow. Or perhaps it had something to do with the order in which the ingredients were added. Anyway, he'd had enough of marvellous magic medicines for one day. Still, he knew that something tremendous had taken place that morning. For a few brief moments, he had touched with the very tips of his fingers the edge of a magic world. <laughs> <laughs>